I'll do it. Good evening, YouTube world. I'm your host, Paul Italia. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Welcome to the Arm Wrestling Buzz, episode 51. And we got a good one in store for you tonight. We got special okay, guest, Sean Boom Hancock in the house. We got the Arm Wrestling Buzz crew. We got Ryan Grondin, Matt Hollywood Conley, and Israel Chavez. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? Good, man. Doing good. Doing good, bro. Doing good. So uh, I want to first start this off. We got a, a big super match coming up. I want to first start off, and I want to hear Sean's prediction on Levon versus Devin Lorette. How do you think this goes, bro? Honestly, <clears throat> I hope I don't get banned, but uh, I just don't see uh, I don't see Devin pulling that. I just don't I don't see Devin ever ever having the power that Levon ha has. Uh, I mean. Definitely, he's got more tools in his toolbox, but um, just he just likes the power. He's a very, very powerful man, but I, I don't see him coming close to Levon though. Do you even think after that uh, big injury that Levon suffered and all, you think Levon's going to get back to that peak that he was once at? I don't think Levon would come back unless he was ready. I don't think he would come back anything less than what he was. Actually, actually, I think he's going to come back more than what he was the last time they pulled. Wow. Okay. And what about Devin? Um, do you think he's progressed as well? Well, uh, no, that's hard to say. I mean, Devin has been in the sport for so long. His muscles and the connective tissues have advanced to a level to where most people will never get to besides people like John Brzezink. But so, I mean, how much more advanced can he get, you know, or how, can he get stronger? Probably, but I just don't see him being able to get as strong as LeVon. I'm sorry, my feet, uh my feet got uh frozen right now. Is, is your guys' feet is it is it all good? We're back. We're back. It was frozen for like a second now. We're back. Okay, cool. So uh, um what do you think? If Devin had a shot, what is the key for him to be in this? Is he going to have to do something in the setup? Is he going to have to play games to get there? Or do you think there's nothing he can do that the strength gap is just too far apart between them? Yeah, he's just gotta, he's, he has to get stronger. And I don't see him being able to get that strong. Okay. I want to ask Ryan the same questions. We already heard from the rest of the Armas and Buzz crew, you know, everybody's prediction and all. We haven't heard from you, Ryan. What is uh, your thoughts on this? Are you excited about it? And how do you think it's going to turn out? I think I think LeVon's going to be too strong. I think it's going to be similar to last time. Name is matter. I would love to see I would love to see Devin win. But I don't know. Last time LeVon just looked way too powerful. So, so let me ask you this, man. What if Levon just comes in and just straight up dominates him, 6-0, just flashes through him every round and all? What's next then for Levon? You got me, dude. <laughs> uh, some some new some new person coming in like uh, from the from like the powerlifting world or something, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. That's hard like to say. Like a silverback gorilla and teach him how to arm wrestle? Yeah, like just <laughs> like some some no name somebody that just all of a sudden jumps into arm wrestling and is like a crazy natural. I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. So I want to say a quick uh shout out to everybody in the chat. I see a lot of the familiar faces in there. We got the Lucky Ones podcast. We got Roger Learn. We got uh AWC in the house. We got Cody Bird, Jake Green. We got Voodoo. What's up, everybody? Crazy Uncle Jim. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody, man. Thank you for coming through. And if you can, just click that thumbs up. So uh, this week, man, there's been a lot of controversy going around the arm wrestling community. We all heard about it. And I kind of wanted just to find out how did it all start off? I, uh, I seen something going back and forth between uh, Sean and Chance Shaw. Um, I don't know if something went on before that or... So, Sean, if you can, just kind of catch us up. Uh, like, how did that all come to be? Are you talking about how the the bands started to begin with back in 2019 or just from the – No, no, no. 
Well, week. what I seen this week that started was I seen something going on between you and Chance. I really wasn't sure like how it it all or materialized. I'm thinking that's over the bands. I think that's where it all like started from. I, am I correct with that? Yeah. Um... So initially, I was getting some feedback from from a couple guys. I'm not, I'm not going to say names. I don't want to dra uh, drag up any dirt. I'm I'm really trying to stay out of the drama. I don't like the drama. I don't like the drama of the sport. And actually, after this um, podcast here, I plan to completely disconnect myself from the drama of the sport. I have written an article for ArmPower.net. I'm not sure when that's going to be published, but. Um, but if it comes out after this, it's not because I stayed into the drama. It's because I've already written it and sent it to them. Like I said, I don't know when they're going to uh, when they're going to publish that. But um, as far as what happened last week, like I said, I, it, we're, we're coming up on the week of IFA Nationals for the U.S. And uh, several people were saying they were getting phone calls and uh, they were being threatened. Whether I call them phone calls, whether it happened in person, because some of them actually did happen in person. Some of these conversations did, but I'll call them all. I'll call them all phone calls. But um, they were getting calls telling, uh, saying that if um, something's going on, my computer I want to close this window so they shouldn't be canceled. No, no. Am I still there? Yes, you yeah. are. You're still here. Okay. All right. So anyway, I, like I said, I was having people contact me saying that if they came to nationals, that they wouldn't be able to, um, or, or it was, they, they, they were being threatened with bans. They were going to be, they were, they were, they may be banned from WAF and they would hurt their chances with East versus West, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it came out real soon. Who was, who was threatening the bans? And I, I mean, I was never even wanting to say his name. I made a post on Facebook pretty much because I was pissed off. And I knew that he would see it, but I wasn't going to say his name. I just made a post and said anybody threatening bands pretty much is a is an enemy of mine. And I, I was pissed off when I made the post. I'll be honest about it. Um, Chance and I were already partner up, partnering up on some things um, behind the scenes. We were we we're going to do some things together there in Florida, but. Um, Again, whenever I made that post, I was pissed off, and I knew he would see it, and uh, he would take it for what it was. Um, but since it came out, other people started blasting who it was. And uh, so I, now I'll say his name and I believe everybody knows his name now or who it was. And it was Chance. So I was I was concerned about it because. This is not old news. This is five year old news. Chance's defense was. I'm just advising people. I'm letting my athletes know. I'm just letting them know that they may have problems or whatever else. But it's not old news. This is like, again, this has been going on since 2019. And the WAF has a representative in the U.S. They have a rep for every country. And that rep is the one who keeps up with athletes within that country and if there's an athlete that's competing for IFA or for PAL that needs to be banned, he'll do that. He's the one that puts them on that list. If that representative, and I've already spoke to that representative, we had a long conversation today, and um, just to, just so I would be informed on how it actually did work, and that's that 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 is how it goes down. So if that representative for the United States or in the United States of that WAF rep. If he's not making phone calls, why the hell is Chance making phone calls? Why does Chance feel like he needs to call and tell people, hey, if you go to IFA Nats, you're going to be banned, whenever the person who's in charge of that's not even doing that, okay? So that 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 excuse that you're just devising people is nil and void. Also, when I spoke to the, w, the, to the WAF representative today, I asked him about several competitors because I don't have the list. I don't have access to the list, but I know the, li the ban list is out there. So I asked him about, uh, uh, well, actually one specific competitor. I asked him if this person is on the band list. The person I'm talking about is somebody who's ranked in the number one or two spots in the United States, and they compete for IFA. And he confirmed, no, this person is not on the band list. 
So if you've got somebody that high profile that's ranked number, consistently ranked number one or two in the United States, that consistently, consistently competes for the IFA, if they're not even on the band list, why should anyone take it upon themselves to call athletes and tell them, hey, if you go to IFA Nets, you know, you might be banned. So that's what that was all about. It really it struck a nerve with me. It's cost me a lot of money um, with, with the band threats going back to Ingen. And that's another thing that pissed me off with Chance is because Chance said, um, I'll do anything within reason uh, for, for Ingen. Whatever, whatever, what it, if Ingen asked me to do something, I'll do it within reason. That's not as exact words, but it's pretty much as exact words. You can read it on, it's still published, so it's, it's on my post. Ingen has cost me a lot of time and money. He has uh, called my athletes, people that were competing for me and vendettas, calling them, telling them if they, they competed with for me, that um, they wouldn't be able to compete with him. He did this to one person that actually got flown into my event. They were at my event already. I flew them in. I put them up in a hotel for the weekend. While they were there, before they competed, he called them up, said, hey, if you compete for him, you can't compete for me. This was over two years ago. This person still has not competed for Ingen. Wow. wow. Yeah. So why are people bowing down to him? Number one, first off, I'm a Southern American. I just can't bow down to anybody, no matter what the consequences. That's just the way that I'm built. But even if you are, how do people bow down to him on the hopes or the chances that you might get to go over there and compete for him over what? It's not even enough to pay your house note. It's damn sure not enough to pay your monthly bills. And it's on a hope or a whim that you might get to go over there and compete. Man, there are other organizations that we can compete for right here to get our to get exposure if that's what it's really about. And that's got to be what it's about. It can't be about the money because the money's just not enough for somebody going for the first time or something like that. There are other organizations that we can compete under to get the exposure. Call the guys up there to high five, man. They're a pretty pretty solid group. I'm sure they'll put you put you on a, on a card. Uh, Monster Factory, they're a really good solid group. I like the guys out of Arm Gods. You know, hell, yeah. go to Ireland and compete for the Arm Gods guys. That'd be a hell of a lot better. They're not, none of those guys are going to issue ban threats to you. Um, we've got some really cool things that Igor is just now starting up again in uh, Dubai with PAL. Some really, really cool promise and stuff. And I'm telling you, if you're new in the sport and you don't know what somebody can do in the sport, just watch what Igor can do. Igor Mazarenko is the god of promotions in the sport of arm wrestling. That's just the way it is. These other promotions wouldn't even be here if it wouldn't have been for the um, Ukrainian war and Igor being, not being able to, 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 to um, do the promotions that he does. But we've got uh, some cool things started back up in Dubai. And uh, Zlati Tour is coming back again this year. The you know the the world famous Zlati Tour, the the baddest uh, tournament in in the world yearly. Oh yeah, wow, that's great to hear. Now yeah. uh, I want I wanted to point something out, Sean. Um, we have a few uh, interesting people in the chat that are putting in some input. Someone who is saying, going back to the, uh, the chance situation, situation that chance actually has a lot of finances involved in his East versus West event, so maybe he's trying to protect that. What do you think about that? That's fine. I mean, I understand protecting yourself, and I really do feel bad for Chance. I actually feel bad for Ingen as well. I think they're all in tough, tough spots that they're basically being told what they have to do. But again, I'm not built that way. I can't yeah. be told what I can or what I can't do. I think they have chosen. Ingen hasn't chosen the wrong org to support, but I will say that about Chance. I think Chance could have been a lot in my opinion, it would have been a lot better for me to see him support an, an org that doesn't have anything to do with bands. Again, there are orgs out there. Arm Gods is one of them. Um, I, mean, I mentioned all of them. But I'd love to see him support one of, put, put, to put his time and effort and passion into one of those orgs versus an org that doesn't uh, that, 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 that supports these bands. But um, as far as Ian goes, Ian doesn't have that uh, luxury. But I think he's got a big enough uh, voice to where he could oppose it and maybe possibly get some things changed. 
He won't do that, though, as long as we're supporting him. As long as we're giving him what he needs from us, he has no reason to petition to WAF and say, hey, I, I need some help, guys. we got to get rid of these bands. He didn't have he, – he, he, he has no reason to do that because we're giving him all the support that he needs. So why would he why would he buck them whenever he has everything that he wants right now? I just think that um, I hate it for – it's really a, 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 a tough spot, especially for me to even say because I have a lot of friends that compete East versus West, and I have a lot of friends that watch East versus West. But I don't see anything changing until – they're not getting everything that they want. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's frustrating it's a, thing. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry, go you guys. No, go ahead. I was I was just going to ask you what you were thinking. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just I I was saying this with uh, Ryan um on the '98 show the other day. But the frustration is that with this sport, we're trying to grow the sport. We're trying to get it accessible for everybody, and I just want people to be able to get up and put their elbow on the table and uh, try arm wrestling. And it's like you know, when we're trying to push it throughout the world and then you get people that say, oh no, you're not allowed to compete in this tournament. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do this. It's like, aren't you trying to make it more, like as much exposure to the world as possible? Why are you restricting people from being able to do this sport? You want it to get bigger. You want more people to compete and to say to a massive group of people that compete with IFA, oh, you can't now compete with this whole WAF organization. And it's like, Okay, so you're completely separating the ability to have the best guys going against each other, to have bigger tournaments, to have more people getting involved in the sport, especially at this point. It's like, why would you do that? It's so ridiculous. No, yeah, I agree, especially at, you know, at a day and age where arm wrestling seems to be, you know, booming more than ever. I mean, you, you'd want to get, you know, as much exposure as you can out there. So I do agree on that. And it seems like a lot of these problems are things that, you know, like Sean was saying, that could be ironed out a little bit better than they are you know and it seems like based on you know a few people's opinions and not wanting to you know make peace it's not happening uh, yeah so yeah we've had the same issues with with that even over here in australia i mean all the way on the other side of the world you know people reaching out saying hey if you compete with awe or if you compete with certain organizations over here you're not going to be working with us anymore and it's like what are you doing why why do you care about somebody that yeah. lives in fucking australia you know <laughs> like that yeah. they're never going to be over there like it's it, ugh, it just it's very very frustrating because it's like why mess with other people's organizations or shows when you had no intention of of using that person it, it's just you're literally just harming the sport yeah. 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 What do you think about this, Ryan? You're a pretty big promoter yourself. Well, luckily, being the 98, I don't have to worry about the 2% guys. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think any kind of ban or anything like that is good for the sport, obviously. You know, whatever level it's at, I think I think it's it's counterproductive to what we're trying to do. And, you know, maybe if enough people uh band together and, and contest it. Maybe it's something we could get changed, you know? And, and that's what it's going to take. Um, it's going to take everybody getting together on board on the same page and, and being against the bands. Um, but I just don't think it's, I don't know. In the story that I wrote on Honor Power, if it comes out, you'll see that, that I, I didn't think my, my voice was big enough. And I still don't think my voice is big enough, but my voice is one voice. If I can change one mind, that'll be two voices and so on and so forth. So if you get enough like minds uh, together, then that might make a difference. But I think faster than that or beyond that, then it would take some people like the Indians of the sport to go to their heads of their countries and say, hey, guys, this just isn't working. We're going to have to petition off and we're going to have to figure out a different way because it's just isn't working. But that's not ever going to happen and as long as they're getting everything they want. And we're talking about other countries that are suffering from this. Since that post that I made last week, and don't get me wrong, like I said, I, I was pissed off when I made that post and I just made a small little old post and I didn't think it was going to go anywhere, but it's gone all over the world. I've had five other countries, people, not just one person, but I've had individuals from five. I had to sit down today and go back through all my messages to see where all these people were coming from. I had people from Canada, Mexico, Norway, Sweden, and Germany, but just besides the United States. 
uh, petitioning or, or reaching out to me and telling me their stories of the things that are going on in their countries. And we, I thought we had it bad here. Man, Mexico's got it terrible. <laughs> this freaking ter like so, so these guys down there they're literally scared for their life literally they're like please don't tell anybody that uh that I, that i've said this or i wrote this to you because they're going to come kill me and <laughs> I, I at first i thought it, they were kind of joking but they're not they're really that scared some of the people that are fighting um over power for the sport of arm wrestling in Mexico are they're 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 really scaring some of these guys. But um we have a group down in Mexico that I want to give a shout out to Hector Beltran with um Mexicali Arm Fighters. He's our PAL representative down there. I think he's really got a good head on his shoulders and uh he he'll he'll take the sport to another level in Mexico if we get some of these bad weeds out. But that's just the whole problem is, will we get the bad weeds out? Will they get the bad weeds out? Where Will any of the countries get the bad weeds out? Over in Europe, they're having a lot of, yeah, we have some bad weeds here for sure. But in, uh, in Europe, they're having a lot of problems with the referees. They're really sanctioning the referees at the tournaments. They're banning athletes for being relfed by the wrong referee in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Real quick, <laughs> I'd like to welcome Paul Italia to my podcast. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Yo, I'm having so much problems over here with my uh, computer. I'm just on my phone right now. Sorry about that, but you guys are doing well, so keep going, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard that if people get a photo with another athlete um, from... Oh, I man. Know. There is no way. A photo. Yeah, that's wild. So I've got graphics all over my truck. I've got PAL graphics and uh, my name. I got all kind of graphics on my truck. And I made a joke in the post when I was driving to Ohio. It's an 11 hour drive. And so I'm on the interstate. So I made a post. I'm like, nobody drive beside me because you might get banned. And I thought it was kind of a joke at the time. But it's like, seriously, now don't take a picture with my truck because you might get banned. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> man. Like, Paul, well, you're all good now? Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. So, uh, yeah, I want to catch up. We got a super chat in there from Darren Bills, $2. He says, Paul Italia versus Justin Blair boxing match. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Keep it going, guys. Uh, so, Jeez. I didn't get to hear the whole part with the with the band and everything. And, um, you know, I, I'm assuming you guys touched on all that and all. But uh, moving forward, how do we resolve this problem? Do we have any kind of, like, ideas of – where we could come to some sort of an agreement and, you know, have some sort of unity in the arm wrestling world. Yeah. We hit on all that too. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll catch up. <laughs> you want to, you want to, you know, just quickly tell Paul what you're thinking of, uh, about that, Sean, just so he's, he's up to date. Cause we want to get your opinion on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and may open up some more insight from Paul, but uh, what we're talking about, well, what I said actually is um, as long as right now, the big names in the sport, like Ingen, he's the one that's really sanctioning these uh, or, or push these ban threats. Um, as long as he's getting everything that he wants, then he has no reason to petition the uh, WAF for any changes. What I'm talking about when I say getting everything he wants is by all of our participation, all the athletes' participation, wanting to compete for him, bound down to him, whatever else. And I'm not saying every athlete, and don't get me wrong. There's a, I have a lot of friends out there that are competing with him or for him, and they're not bowing down to him. Matter of fact, I know one athlete that has stood up. And he has told me several times, he says, Sean, I'll compete at every. And this is the difference. This is what I don't get because the bands are just the threat. It's not the same way across the board. This specific athlete competes for him. And he tells me that he'll compete at any one of my tournaments that I, that I, that I have him at. And he's already told him and he said, I don't give a damn. I'm going to compete where I want to. So he's put his foot down to him and he's not banned. You know, so it's just that that's my whole point. You, you, there's two, this is a two part thing. Everyone needs to stand up against the ban threats, whatever it takes, wherever you are in the sport, whether it's watching a PPV or, or, or wanting to go compete for him or listening to his ban threats for two years and you still don't go compete for him. And also it takes people like him going to, to the, uh, to, to Wolf and saying, Hey, we, we need to change. He's got a big enough name. And then all these other people with the big names that has some, 
maybe some influence over Waff, and it's probably not very many, and he may not even have any influence over him. But I'd have to believe he has a little bit. You know, if he, I know he's got influence within his country. If his country goes to him and says, hey, we got to do something, and then all the other countries, it's just going to take some unity, and I, it's going to take unity in the, the athletes and the spectators standing up against it. And then it's going to take the uh, those organizations that are pushing the bands to uh, stand up against WAP itself. Well, it's uh, funny that you said that, brother, because uh, after I seen your post out there, and you know, I seen you guys going back and forth with each other. I kind of, I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. I wanted to find out who the person is behind the scenes, you know, putting these bands and using them as a weapon. So I made a post on Facebook and uh, within 15 minutes, I don't want to say any um, exact names or anything. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but I got multiple, multiple um, messages and everybody kind of surprised me. I was expecting to hear everything with WAF and then I heard the name Engin Terzi. And yeah. they were all saying that he's threatening um, these big organizations. Um, so the organizations will go in, get uh, two athletes to agree to a super match. Once Engen would hear about it, he would hit up these athletes and he would say to them, you know, if you do compete under them, you are no longer welcome to East versus West. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had this, uh, we've heard this multiple times. And the problem is, is nobody wants to say it in a public setting. Nobody wants to be the guy like, yo, Angan was the one that did it. Everybody's kind of like scared to say it out in public, but behind closed doors, everybody's saying his name. Now, I wouldn't have believed it and all, but I've had my own experience with Angan. And, you know, I used to be good friends with Angan and all. And I don't know where we actually fell off track with our relationship, but you all know I was at the Vitacell um, events. I met LeVon over there. And I came real buddy buddy with Levon, and uh, we we set up when we were in person that when he would get home, we would go and have an interview on my channel. I was so excited about this. This was like the biggest interview to date that I would have on my channel. So um, I, I prepared for a few days. I got all these great questions and all, and I, I really put in work, a couple of hours of work of you know coming up with some real thought out questions. Well, um, the day of. I get a barrage of phone calls at like 7 a.m. And I'm like, what is going on? It's like, you know, I'm on the West Coast. Everybody's on the East Coast. So, you know, it's like crack of dawn for me. So I'm like, what? Like, did something happen and all? I don't want to mention names, but a very big name in our sport calls me up and was just like, yo, did something happen between you and Angan? And I was so confused when he said Angan. I'm like, no, not at all. And I look back in my text, the, my, the last message I sent to Engen, which was a couple of weeks before, and I hit up Engen. I said, yo, brother, if you need any help with anything, just let me know. I'm here to help. And he said, I appreciate that and all that. So my last uh, correspondence with him was all positive. So I was like, no, not at all, man. Everything's good with him. And he's like, yeah, well, about that. And then all of a sudden he goes, you got an um, interview today with LeVon? And I'm like, how did he even know? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got an interview in a couple hours with LeVon. He goes, yeah, about that. He goes, uh, Engen found out about it, and uh, he hit up LeVon last night, and he told LeVon that he's under contract and that he can't go onto my channel. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, what? what is he even talking about? Like, contract? You can't go onto a channel? Like, I'm thinking in my head, I'm cool with Engen. He used to be my coach. If you look at my gym... The whole gym is everything East versus West. I bought every piece of merchandise, even the East versus West table for $1,500, autographed and all. Like, you know, I was the biggest fan of East versus West. So to hear this, I'm like in shock. And I'm like, no, nah, there's something wrong, man. There's no way that Engen would do that. Sure enough, man, I, I that was it. I couldn't get in touch with LeVon after that. LeVon was banned from my channel. And then there was multiple other um, Eastern arm wrestlers that I had previous relationships with was good friends with. And when I hit them up because I wanted to go test to see who else he hit up. Well, they straight up was like, yo, I can't come on. I don't want this to go public or anything, but I was told not to come on your channel. And I was just in shock. I was just like, what made this happen and all. So I I've experienced the same thing and I don't even throw events. 
I'm just trying to help promote all these organizations and get their athletes on to put a spotlight on their organizations. So I'm like trying to help out. I'm not competition. And I was banned and I got shown like, yo, kiss the ring or, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're not doing this no more. So I mm-hmm. didn't say anything about this. This is the first time I'm coming public with this. This happened many months back right after the first uh, Vitacell event. And it really ate at me. It, it really did. And if you guys noticed, I kind of stopped going, having all the top, top stars on. And I kind of went a different route and started getting all the local guys and, you know, started finding characters and all. And I'm like, you know what? You guys want to control those guys and, and, you know, flex your contracts around. I don't need that, man. Yo, I'm going to get people looking at our sport no matter what. You know, I'll find a new route. And I ain't ever going to friggin' bow down to anybody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, if, if it went that crazy and people start banning me from events, I'll just start throwing my own events. So, like, mm-hmm. you're never going to get me to bow down to anybody. So, you know, I, I that's why I'm here right now. That's why I'm, I'm getting Sean on here. I want this out there to the public. And I'm not trying to start a war here. I'm not trying to draw a line in the sand. What I am trying to do here is just kind of remind everybody we're all on the same side here. We all have the same passion. We love this sport. It, it doesn't need to go to war. There doesn't need to be two sides. Like, I'm still, like, I would still be down if Engen came on and was like, yo, I'm going to stop with all this craziness and bands and all. Yo, I'm Team Engen again, man. I- I'm-, I'm helping out with East versus West. I'm putting spotlight on that, you know. But, you know, let me go and do what I do. Let me help you out. Let me interview your athletes. There's no reason that you got to control everything, you know. And that's that's my stance on this. I, I really am against the bands. And before... East versus West was out there. Igor was the bad guy for having contracts. And everybody was blaming Igor. And then Engen was saying to everybody, like, he's never going to do contracts and all. Now, I know when he said that, it was very early in his business uh, endeavor and all. And I know eventually there probably is going to have to be contracts once big money's involved and all. But we don't need to have contracts where we lock athletes down more than one event. You know, let them go compete wherever they want. So that that's my whole take from it. I, I don't want to go to war with Engen. I'm hoping, like me saying this right now, he's not going to go and take offense to this and that he's going to say, yo, we're all on the same side here, and let's just spread arm wrestling, man. Paul, that's, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. What do you mean? Hoping that this is not the start of a war with Engen? Yeah. <laughs> yep. we, but you know I, that. I, I hope he realizes, man, you know, like, I'm not competition. I don't think anybody here wants to be competition. I think everybody wants to just do the same thing, you know, and, you know, we don't have to like go competing with each other, fighting with each other, banning. I mean, that's all counterproductive in my eyes, man. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, You know, you guys can correct me Mm -hmm. if I am, but I I like to look at arm wrestling as a positive endeavor that we all could do positive things to spread the sport. And we don't need to go to war and, and bring negative into this because that's all it's going to do is bring hate and we're not doing what we're trying to do. I was no yeah. competition for Ingen back when this all started. You know, Ingen started as East versus West about the same time I was starting some things here in the States, some high value things here in the States and they did a pay-per-view and uh, Vendetta in Vegas. But um, I, I never offered what, what Ingen offered from the very beginning. You know, I didn't have the kind of that, that kind of money or support or, or, I mean, we had the pay-per-view the same, but uh, that's about it. But um, I was never any competition for him. For him to call guys and saying, "Hey, if you compete for him, if you do a, if you go, if you go to his tournament, then uh, you you can't compete for East versus West." That was just ludicrous to me for him to tell people that they come to. My, I have so many people, like I say, that they that they they actually got that phone call from him. If you go to any of his tournaments, you cannot compete for East versus West. And some of these people have never even competed for East versus West. And this has been years ago. Matter of fact, the one that I spoke to earlier, you wasn't even, you wasn't on here earlier, but I, I flew one guy out. I was had him doing a vendetta and uh, I flew him out, put him up at a hotel and everything. Why he was there at my event, getting ready to compete. He got the phone call. He comes to me and says, Sean, I can't compete for you, man. I was like, are you kidding me? No, I just, they're not going to let me compete on East versus West if I compete here. So 
So, I mean, that put me in a hard spot. What do I do? You know, cuss the guy out, you know, kick him out of the building or what? Or I'm still friends with him. I'm still friends with him, I guess, because I ate that money, you know. But still. Well, I, want, I want to read one of his comments on here. It's uh, from Cody Bird. And he says, uh, not sure how banning your athletes from being interviewed by certain people can be blamed on WAF. That very much sounds like a business decision. So, yeah, Cody, I, I agree completely with that, man. And, you know, I hear everybody going, oh, you know, it's WAF and, you know, he they're behind everything. But, I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, WAF it, has been doing this for many years. It's now, it seems like Engen is using the WAF ban kind of as like a weapon and like, yo, you know, you can't compete there because, you know, they have IFA referees, you know, mm -hmm. and that's that's what's being – done right now in my eyes we all know that the WAF and IFA have been going to war with each other for many years but what I think is new and what's behind the driving force that's really stirring things up and the one that's scaring the athletes it's not really the WAF it's the Engen sending the the direct messages to them and you know and I think that's where we're at with that <laughs> let me let so, me just yeah. can, can I just speak a, a little bit on like I've been at odds with Engen for a long time right long long time um, I think there's probably more to it, more to it from the sense of, I think WAF probably has Engen over, over the barrel right now. Cause I think the way it works in Turkey, from my understanding is that Turkey is governed by the governing body of, of WAF and there, there's certain government regulations. So if all of a sudden there are, tournaments or events going on in Turkey that Engin puts on and he knowingly is having people on those events that are banned then that could jeopardize like the whole shebang so mm -hmm. even though I'm at odds with Engin I think there are some dicey things like WAF I think is the the, the true final boss the for sure. Hold on one second, guys. And I want to I want to just say this uh super chat out there from Darren Bills for two dollars. He says, Italia keeps playing Engen when it isn't him. So Darren, you just heard my story about with the interview with Levon. Now, there is no WAF rule saying that you can't come on Paul Italia's in, uh channel to be interviewed. So can you please explain where I was misguided um, with that? What why it's not Engen that was behind that when I was told directly that Levon was told from Engen he's under contract and cannot come onto my channel. So let, let's forget about all the arm wrestling. Let's just talk about that interview part. So please explain to me, Darren, where I'm wrong with that. Um, Uncle John, uh, same question for you, brother. You know, I, I understand, you know, there probably is a lot of other forces behind it that we might not know. But as far as my particular, you know, circumstance with having mm -hmm. Levon coming on my channel and then finding out he was told by Engen that if he goes on my channel that he's violating the contract. So I, you know, I what do you think with that? I, I I can say that I know of other channels that have experienced the exact same thing. Okay. So I I I, I can hundred percent I get it. Yeah. Got it. For, for I want to also introduce guys. Before. We got uh, Will Blazitsky from the High Five Crew in New Jersey. They mm -hmm. are the guys cool. that throw the big knuckles ups events and everything. And we also got Christopher in the house. He's also from the High Five Crew. And uh, welcome, guys. How you guys doing tonight? Oh, we're doing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Clear, clear, brother. Brother. Yep. We're doing. We're doing fantastic. Uh, May 11th is going to be absolutely insane. But um, I know there's there's craziness going on. We've been listening to this podcast this whole time. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, but no, thank you guys for having us. Um, we're we're just super excited to put on some awesome arm wrestling, and we appreciate all the support from all you guys. But but let let me not stop you guys. Keep the ball rolling. Just do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> Hell yeah! I also wanted to ask you guys because uh, you know you guys. Have running one of the biggest organizations in, uh, you know, North America these days. And uh, what's your guys' stance on ban, um, like, organizations banning other athletes from competing, other competing organizations? Like, what what is your guys' whole stance on that? Yeah, sure. It's actually, like, super simple. Um, we just want to make more opportunities for these professional athletes to make a living and uh, get exposure. It's, it's like – as much as we we can, we try to keep the politics out of it. And it's super simple. Like, let's get more guys, give them an opportunity. They make money. People learn their name. They have awesome competitions. It's like 
the simplest thing ever. I mean, you guys all have known us like since we started doing this thing. It's like let's put on an awesome show, and um, everybody hopefully can go some with some money in their pocket and just have a have a wonderful time. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to say to say, it. Chris. Did I say it right? I mean, I don't know how else. Yeah, I mean, just my two cents. A, a lot of it too, right? Is we uh, we kind of communicate directly with the athletes because we want to make sure that they are always looking at their own best interest. We uh, we look at it as not really. Uh, what does the organization do for them? We want to kind of look at them as individuals and say, hey, you know, we want what's best for you. And you you put everything on the table that you know is out in the community and we kind of leave it from there. Because um, we don't really, we always tell the athletes when they work with us, like we want to make sure that when you're part of our events, um, we only better your brand from here on out, you know, and because and they help us, right? Without them, there's nothing to show. So we got to make sure that it works both ways. Plus, who doesn't want to wear purple? Come on. It's everybody's. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, Sean, what's your whole thoughts, man, on, um, you know, we know Igor is coming back now. We know he's got the WAC and uh, he's going to be kicking off April 27th over in Dubai. Um, how do you think that's going to go? Because uh, we know Igor was the other side. You know, he kind of was the, the the big guy, you know, before COVID and was kind of running the arm wrestling game and all. And now with East versus West kind of being the big guy, how is this all going to work out? Are these two going to be, you know, going at each other? Is it going to be a competition? Are we going to have this is the beginning of contract wars? Do you have any idea how this could uh, turn out? I could see it becoming some type of conflict or contract wars in the beginning but nobody should be fooled igor mazarenko is the godfather of arm wrestling promotions he's just he knows the game more than anybody else he has more connections in the game than anybody else he knows what he's talking about he's been doing it longer there's just no competition with him with him all he needs is the availability to get out and and do what he does Whenever he has that availability at full capacity, then nobody else stands a chance. That's the reason there wasn't anybody else around before, I mean, but before the before COVID and and the war shut him down. Before that, there was nobody else around. It's not because they didn't want to; it's because they couldn't compete with him, and that hadn't changed. The only thing that's changed since then is he wasn't available before, and now he's becoming available again. So now he's out in Dubai with the big money men, with the big sponsors, the people that can, that can afford it. And they listen to other people give their spiel. And then when he comes up, his spiel is so much different because he's done it for so long. It's so much more genuine. He doesn't have to think about it. He just says it. And he says it because he knows it. He believes it. So whenever he speaks the way that he speaks about it, they believe him. And they're like, damn. All these other guys we've been supporting these past couple of years, they sounded good, but this guy right here, he, he's a fucking ma ma magician or something. I mean, he sounds fantastic. So yeah, they're everybody's going to you know just throw in behind him in my in my opinion. We got a couple of super chats in here. We got Greg Brown TV for five dollars. He goes, "I was banned from Paul Italia's show. <laughs> Fake news. You're not banned, brother. You're not banned." We had a little differences, but you're all cool, man. You you can still come on the channel, man. We all good. Uh, Gunner Costin, uh, $1.99. I heard Ryan likes guys. <laughs> Hook it up with Harlan, bro. There you go. Just, just arm wrestlers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. What... There you go. Well, <laughs> Sean, I, I like what you're saying with Igor coming back. And, uh, yeah, he is the godfather of arm wrestling. And what I really like about it, man, is I just know when there's healthy competition in business – Everybody progresses. Everybody evolves. It forces it, you know? So I think it's going to raise the bar for arm wrestling. I think the quality of production will go up. Um, I think it's going to get a lot more eyes on it worldwide because now, you know, there's going to be another big stage going on in Dubai. And I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of stuff coming to North America eventually. Yeah, we know East versus West is already making the move. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so is Igor. So is Igor. Yeah, they're interested and the uh, and the productions we have here in the states. As a matter of fact, I, I sent them uh, their um, invitation letter for their um, visas to come over, and they're planning on coming over in May. And um, they and there's a TV production crew 
owned out of Dubai that does the TV productions down there that's interested in in the U.S. and what we have going on here. So all that is hopefully, and I believe it will, because it's, it's Igor Mazarenko that we're talking about. So I believe it's going to happen. So all of that that they have going on there is going to translate over to the states, and uh, I don't I don't think it's going to take too very long to ha to make that happen. So again, for everybody that's hanging right, their really hats, on, uh, say again. I'm really excited to hear that. And I also wanted to know, what is your relationship with Igor? Are you the representative um, of Igor's um, leagues in North America? Is Are you his guy? Yeah, I'm his guy for North America, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know um, people weren't sure if, you know, you're actually – connected with Igor. Now we know you are Igor's North America representative. Yeah, I, I, I speak to him. There's three of them, actually. Igor, uh, Kirill, and um, Marchin. I speak to uh, all three of them almost daily. One of the three, at, at least. Very nice. We got another super chat from Greg Crown TV for $5. He goes, a lot of promoters in Mexico. I am one of them. Planning on doing more events to get arm wrestlers paid and all are welcome. Viva Mexico. Thank you very much, Greg Brown. Appreciate that, brother. We also had uh, another guy uh, hitting me up. He's got some big things going on in Mexico coming up. Um, I think he just sent me over a flyer. I got to go check the dates and everything. I think uh, July, he's got something. It's Hector Beltran. He's over in, uh, I think it's Mexico. Bali. Yeah, Mexicali. Mexicali. Yeah, Mexicali and all. So he's got a great events coming up so a lot of big things going on in mexico with arm wrestling and uh very excited to see that greg brown keep doing your thing man i always called you the devin Loret of mexico and all spreading it all over you're doing great things for sure hey i, so, I uh, see uh waff ban engen's eyebrows <laughs> oh my god wow Just so wrong. uh i i want to ask you guys so we got knuckles up coming up, man. We got going on May 11th, man. I want I want to just kind of get a quick rundown of what you got planned. I heard there's a new big venue in the works and all, and I want to kind of find out where the after pool is going to be going down. So uh, if you could kind of catch us up on everything, and just so everybody knows, I'll be making a trip over there. I got my VIP seats. Um, they're up for sale. Get over there and uh, scoop them up before VIP sold out. I know you guys got a much bigger venue or something. It's like an official theater now. Yeah, so we are officially at the Barrymore Film Center, still in Fort Lee. Uh, it's a beautiful, state-of-the-art, like, $20 million movie theater, film theater thing that they had. We're actually going to be uh, doing some filming there tomorrow to show you know everybody what it's all about. But beautiful, beautiful facility. And um, as we have said every single time, we're just trying to bring the bar up higher and higher and higher. And so uh, we have some really cool matches. We have two new matches that we'll be announcing soon. Um, someone may even be on this, uh, you know, podcast. I don't know. Um, but uh, we are having two new matches. Um, the ladies are coming back. And we are going to be doing something really special uh, during a little bit of a halftime uh, that you guys will hear about soon. So, same thing as always, as, as high of a production as possible. Great matches. Um, and, you know, if you want to see them, they're all on our Instagram. But, yeah, we're super excited. Tickets are for sale. Pay-per-views are for sale. And for the rest of this week, if you use code KNUCKLES10, you get 10% off the pay-per-view. But, yeah, I hope all you guys come. It's it's going to be incredible. We have a lot of, um, just like Paul, and thank you for the sponsorship. We truly appreciate that. It means the world. Ryan as well. Um we have some pretty cool people uh, coming in person that day. Um, some pretty big names in the arm wrestling world. I won't. I won't spoil the uh, the excitement. But if you're in person and you're there, it's gonna be it's gonna be something special. Spoil it. Let me ask you. We uh, we know we do the uh, <laughs> press conference and all. Can you kind of just give us like where's the press conference gonna go? Is it going down in the theater? Huh, and then sure. my other question was, I know when we were at the convention center, we would just go right across the hallway, and that's where the after pull would be going down. Where's the after pool going down with the theater and all? Sure. So first, the press conference will actually still be happening in the hotel itself. And then the after pull is actually um, for anyone who came uh, the, the other day. I'm sorry, at the last event, uh, we're going to have it right outside the restaurant, which is about 10 minutes from the venue. It's called uh, the cast cast iron pot. Right, Chris? Yep. yep. We're making sure I didn't mess that up. Um, and it's a really cool like. Um, how do I explain? Like, um, 
what would you call that? It's like a big open area. And it's all covered and stuff. So we're going to set up a bunch of tables outside. So all the athletes, everyone can go inside, eat. It's, you know, cream, um, uh, barbecue, and then they can have drinks and keep pulling. It's going to be, it's going to be really, really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I guess I'm going to miss the after pull. Why? Why? Cause you're going to be eating the whole thing inside the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> That place was delicious. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> it's gonna be really good. So that just another reason why you know, for anybody who's watching, um, I think that's what makes what we do so special. Is you know, we try to make it really affordable. I think general mission tickets are about forty bucks. Um, but being in person, seeing the lights, the cameras, the action, you know, people such as yourselves, fans of the sport, and and watching it in person, and not just you know watching it you know we we love arm wrestling of all sorts right but when you really get immersed in it uh it's something really cool and special and like i said we have a lot of new stuff coming out um smoke smoke machines are going to be nothing when you get in you guys uh mm. knuckles up three but yes the after will be at the restaurant we'll be stuffing our faces drinking a lot of beer and food and sake and whatever the hell that stuff is it's gonna be good hey, I, that, was the wrong, that was the wrong uh it's not sake right what was it chris so would you so would you, so would you. sorry sean go ahead, my bad can I can I say something about their event now? Yes, yes. Um, I have seen a lot of events. I've seen a lot of high caliber um, super match events, uh, promotions and all. But um, they have a really really top notch one. If y'all hadn't been there, or if you hadn't seen it in person, or even if you hadn't seen it on TV, I was only there for the first one. I hate that so much. But anyway, um, I'm sure that it's even gotten better for the second one and now the third one. Being that I was only there for the first one, I can only imagine what it's like now. And that was my experience with the first one, is it was so much better than most anything that I've seen out there, other than something like the Zloty Tour had they have top I mean the top eight, top eight, and that's again that's you you're talking about Igor Mazarenko there. So it's it's hard to um step up to Igor Mazarenko's level, especially for your first uh, event. But it's uh, other than than one of his events, that's bar none the uh the best events i've ever seen in person and, yeah, and no. just, just to go off of that sorry chris um that is something we actually really um the head of our production crew joe sandell took a lot of inspiration from is all those top eight events that Igor used to put on and mm -hmm. the production was incredible right so it's kind of you know what we've always been shooting for yeah well i gotta say this bro I, i'm a, a promoter you know i've thrown many events when i went to your first knuckles up my mouth was just on the floor. I could not yeah. believe you guys came out swinging like that. You know, yeah. just like Sean said, usually. And if you look back at the first East versus West, man, you could see, you know, they were, you know, it was like medieval times for East versus West. They were just coming out. There was a lot wrong with the production. All I walked into your place and it was just like, I felt like I was in mini UFC. I couldn't oh, yeah. believe it. I was like the lights, the, the, it was like a full club set up. They had a full DJ, like, it was so, so official. And then the next one, it just, you guys raised the bar. You guys took the constructive criticism from anybody that went there in person and you put it into action and you corrected things. And I, I'm really excited to see when Knuckles Up 3 and when hearing that you guys are going to a bigger and better venue, which I already, the venue was just amazing. I was like, yo, you can't top this. But now I hear you got some multi-million dollar theater and all. Holy yeah. shit, I'm excited about this, guys, for real. Yeah. I got a couple of super chats I got to catch up on. We got Mo D's. He said, $4.99. <laughs> Not comfortable with having Igor gatekeeping athletes, especially Levon. He sees what became of the sport without him. I'm deaf weary as I love the sport. Well, Mo, um, I don't really see much of a difference, man, of what Igor was doing than what's going on now with East versus West. But, you know, the, the only difference I you see is east versus west connected the west with the east where i didn't really see so much originally with igor but i think from seeing everything that's going on and how the arm wrestling community kind of has evolved i would think that igor is going to pretty much do the same thing and kind of get the west involved as well and i'm sure sean could kind of enlighten us with that is he going to kind of go with that model man because i know before with the top eight we only had like maybe one or two uh north americans over there represent us is he going to have more Westerners involved with his events now? Well, that's already what we have going on there is uh, the, the, the events that are going on in Dubai now are typically have 12 people and it's, uh, four of them are from the States. 
So, okay. um, and, 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 and again, they're, they're coming over here. I've already sent them their, uh, their um, invitation letters for their visas to come over here in, in May. And if that goes down and again, the Dubai um, TV production crews, they're interested in the States and what we have going on here for their television crews to film what we have going on. And uh, it's just no doubt in my mind that all that's going to transpire in a really fast, rapid rate. Once it starts, it's just going to snowball, snowball, snowball into something really big. And yes, the States are definitely on the radar. So let me ask you this, Sean. I know you got a big event coming up May 18th over in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I'm assuming that's where, you know, you get into visas for Igor and company. Is that going to be the kickoff to Igor and your events in North America? Uh, that's hopefully that would be the preview of a kickoff. Wow. I'm excited about that, man. And I'm hearing that uh, Ryan Grande and 98 are going to be involved with that as well. Absolutely. Hell yeah, man. That's great to hear. Um, we got another super chat from Alexander Clark for five dollars. He says, Uncle John, gonna be fun seeing you pull Connor May 4th. Just curious if you approach for that match is different than when you pull Jeff. Ah, well, the the Connor match, that's for number one in Minnesota. Um, that match has been pushed to August 3rd. Because I got another match that's pretty close to that time, so uh, we were we were lucky enough we were able to make things work, and uh, so I've got a left hand super match and a right hand super match on the third in Minnesota. Very well, nice. And now, well, Uncle John, we finally got you on here, brother. I know you've been so busy and you got <laughs> practices on Wednesday nights, but you've been the guy we all been wanting to talk about, man. We we know you had that huge match that just kind of just brought down the whole arm wrestling world, man. So I <laughs> want to hear all about it, man. How did it go? You know, kind of give us a inside scoop on that press conference. I saw that mm. you got your head split and all that. Yeah. So, it was a general, like, you know, how was the event and all that over in Arm Gods? Yeah. So, you know, for me, this was this was really big from uh, fulfilling my destiny. OK, when I started arm wrestling and like took it seriously, there's really just a few things I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to get paid to arm wrestle. I wanted to do arm wars because that was what I came in on. And I really wanted to try something insane like this right like like something really really crazy and so i got the opportunity to do that and i when you're thinking about doing something this stupid you have to find an equally stupid opponent and evan burgoyne was that stupid opponent <laughs> um and and i'm not so sure this match works anywhere else or with anyone else um the uh press conference yeah that was uh that was quite the moment I, you know, Evan and I, when we went into this, we were like, oh, the only way we're going to do it is if we do it extreme, right? Like, I, I'm not going to do this and like pump it up as crazy and then it turns out not to be crazy. Um, so we kind of gave each other uh, leeway to do to do what we wanted to do. And so it didn't surprise me that I got hit in the head with the beer can, but it did surprise me when I had to spend seven hours in the ER with, with stitches in my head that, that night, that was, that was not on the, the game plan. Um, the match uh, was, I think the, the, the entertainment value and the theatrics of it were, were what I wanted it to be. The only thing that I was disappointed about with that match was that it actually didn't hurt bad enough. <laughs> it, it we actually put too many tacks on on the pin pads so it was like too much surface area like don't i mean don't get me wrong it's not like it didn't hurt because it did hurt but uh you know and there was multiple moments where i'm plucking tacks out of my arm and and all that stuff so for me i was completely fulfilled now i know that a lot of people are furious and 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 completely raging um so uh what can I do? I'm when I'm 70, I'm gonna look back and be very happy about it. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's Uncle all I can John. Say. I gotta ask you this, bro. When I watched the match, I saw round one, you you looked dominant, you you took him right down, you you got him good with the text. Mm -hmm. Round two, man, I see a dirty mood from Evan, man. False start. I, I couldn't believe it. That's when I knew everything yeah. was fucking real. That was yeah. like 
oh my god, this is gonna go somewhere where nobody expected. That was scary. What was that like, bro? What was the pain when you got nailed into that? Yeah, it was a little, little surprising. It was a little surprising. Uh, obviously, uh, not something I had planned for. Not something I uh, was super happy about. But uh, look, it, it, uh, me and Evan remain good friends, right? We're, we're the type of people who can do things like this and and push boundaries a little bit or a lot bit and uh come out on the other side so you know for those who liked it great those that didn't that's okay too um i don't think that that evan or i am a powerful enough entity to really affect the sport that badly so you know i would just say maybe calm down for everybody that wants to like hang us and all that stuff <laughs> just my opinion what happened what happened that night um we heard a little bit from evan between you and ron beth i heard there was a stern talking to you can you kind of just catch us up on that ron was ron was very upset ron was very upset uh i think there was there was a big push of uh having a good time and drinking for like the six hours that it that the event went on and so i think Ron had something to say and he wanted to say it and like it's Ron Bath, right? Like like I I just took it, you know? I just took it. It's Ron Bath. It it's 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 to me in a certain sense <laughs> maybe it sounds so awful. In a certain sense that if if I wouldn't have done it correctly, that wouldn't have happened. Right? But I did it correctly enough to bring on that type of emotion. And that was the point of it is to, to bring on big emotion. Now, am I happy that I made Ron Bath mad? No, I don't want Ron Bath to be mad at me, but you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, you, you don't always get what you want. You got to be true to your, to your art and uh, go for the pin. What have you got in general, as far as the OGs in the sport? Are they all against you? Have they voiced their opinion personally to you? Are you getting a lot of hate? Are you getting a lot of love? Uh, not a lot of hate. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a little bit more distant these days from from social media and and YouTube. Just kind of doing my own thing. Um, Good for you. Yeah, like I just feel like in the last year that I pulled away. I'm such a better arm wrestler. I'm so much better. I'm so much stronger. Uh, and it's, and I really have, I have never had more ambition to go and, and pull tough guys and, and really see where I'm at, where I am for real. And, uh, thankfully, you know, uh, I, I'm able to do that and, and have, uh, people who are willing me to willing to, to bring me out and, and have 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 me at their events. So uh, I think that's what I'll continue to do is climb the ranks every once in a while. I'll probably do something stupid, and uh, and I'll be be on the lookout for that because <laughs> I you know for, for me it's it was really about the Uncle John character and and creating that character and bringing it to fruition. And I really like it. Sounds corny, but I feel like that's a pretty high peak for a dastardly character like uncle John to, to end on, right? Like it's going to be hard to, to, to do more than that, but we'll see where the future goes. I want to ask Will and Chris, uh, what was your thoughts of that thumbtack match? Were you fans of it? <laughs> yeah, I guess I could take let, this one. Yeah. Let it go <laughs> boys. Let it, let it fly. <laughs> no, no, I, I think, right. Um, it definitely adds a different kind of like flavor to our sport, right? So I think it, it all about what type of demographic you're trying to hit. I think for us, we thought it was definitely cool for for what it was. It definitely. Showed I us. thought it was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was really cool. I, I think too, right? It's like uh, we would never try to replicate something like that because it's not our mo. You know, mm -hmm. we we kind of put out a certain brand out there, but for what Arm Gods does and with their you know crazy uh, like dubbing videos that they make, it's like mm -hmm. on brand and it kind of makes sense. So um, I, I think Uncle John, you you did uh, you played the role well. You know, I thought it was cool, but my I, my honestly my my uh, my gripe was is when I was watching Paul like talk about the match, he's holding these two. And there's like spots missing. And I'm like, you couldn't have spent five minutes and just added the thumbtacks back. Like I was just, I'm, cause I'm, I'm like super OCD. So I was like, <laughs> why did they miss those couple of thumbtacks? Damn it. No, but like Chris said, it's, it, 
it, it's uh we actually had an interesting conversation with uh ian carnegie not that long ago about how like you know his background if you know as know i believe he, his family's done like a lot of wrestling and that type of stuff so it's cool to see that bring in to be brought into the sport um i was just more like when i saw the blood coming out of your head i was like <laughs> like okay i see i thought it was i thought it was one of those like so that that's when he hit you right with the with yeah. the thing yeah, can, I got my stitches out uh, oh, wow. a few days wow. ago, but you can. Oh, jeez. Yeah, got a couple, couple <laughs> nice little dingers on there. Yeah, that was intense. That was that was definitely intense. But yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm kidding. I didn't hate it, but it it definitely is something that like I don't want blood at those. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's completely viable, and that's why I understand the position of like the the vitriolic in some cases the very very uh, uh, upset emotions that come with it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I, it's okay to not like it. I think yeah. I'm I, of the, I'm of the opinion where I, I think we should have a wide spectrum of the sport. Like the sport doesn't have to be one thing. And I don't think it being one thing over here is going to change what it is over here. Um, <laughs> I, I liked what Paul Maiden said to uh, Jody Williams. He was like, look, we gave people 15 great matches and we put this one at the end. So if you want to watch 15 great matches and you don't like the last one, just shut it off. Yeah, that's a good point. Simple as that. I, I thought that was a good. I got a couple of super chats. I got a, I got a couple of super chats. I got to catch up on. We got a U.S. Liberty. Never forget for 420. He says John did this match or the javelin because more the cause more chaos. Javelin was way worse. I was, I was, I was too, I was not prepared for that level of intensity at the time the javelin happened. <laughs> and I didn't have any experience in dealing with that level of, of hatred. Right. Um, so this was like, like I'm farther off the internet now. And like, so this has been nothing. Like I haven't got any death threats. So this is like easy, easy, easy. Cause you were hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, uh, we've got it, another super chat, and this one I want to comment. Michael Workspace says, uh, for $1.99, he goes, Hi, Paul, your interview with Igor might have triggered Engen. That is a good point, Michael. What I'm going to do is when I get off of here, I'm going to go look back at the dates and see if I did that um, Igor interview in between that last text message and when I got uh, banned from doing the Levon interview that is a good point and maybe that's something i didn't catch up on and i would like to find that out but like i said before and again if you're listening brother i'm not looking to go to war with you bro you know i always been a loyal person to you uh, i've always supported east versus west i try to do that with every organization in arm wrestling man I i'm one of those guys i just love our sport and i know that promotions is key to getting us out there so i will help everybody out man you know when i came into the sport i made that clear i'm coming in as a promoter not as an organizer meaning i will promote any organization's super matches that's it i'm not here for the money i'm here to help spread arm wrestling so if you're listening angan not trying to make this an attack on you and at all all i'm saying man is like we gotta just put these bands behind us we could all communicate if there's a problem hit me up brother just like we used to, we used to have open communication. If you know something was said that you didn't like, you'd hit me up, and you know we we talk about it and we'd work it out. You know, same thing with me. If there was something that you did that I didn't like, I would confront you. We need to have that open communication, bro. And like I said, man, I'm not here to go and slander you in any kind of way. I'm on the same team, man. I love this sport and I want to grow it. Um, back to the one last thing I want to ask Sean about the thumbtack match. I'm really curious. Your thoughts on um, the Uncle John Evan Bergone match? Shit, I didn't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't watch that. Both. You watched I ain't got time for that. <laughs> you ain't got time for that. <laughs> Man, I have been on the road every weekend. I, I was home for Easter weekend, but other than that, I have been on the road or in the woods building my cabin. And uh, here since uh, the probably late February, I've been on the road, so. I have not seen anything. People ask me things all the time. Have you seen that match or that match? I would love to, but I don't have the time. I'm sorry. I actually did see something about Uncle John holding his head with blood going everywhere, but I was too busy to watch any more than that. I'm sorry. Hey, 
that got to you though. You'll never forget that image. That image. <laughs> That's for sure. I actually thought I was watching WWE at the at the at the time. <laughs> And uh, that scarred me when I was a kid, so I turned it off real quick. So. <laughs> but no, I, I another, apologize. Uh, I, just, I hadn't watched it. Michael Workspace for $1.99. He says, you're a good guy, Paul. I met you at AW4 in Houston. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of arm gods i i really liked that event um i liked how they had all the super matches it was 15 super matches it was like a, a nice long day of entertaining matches and then it just finished it off perfect for me man i i really like that and i'm one of those guys where you know i'm on the same page as with the arm gods they gave us 15 high quality high ranking matches you know and then the last one was just like that cherry on the top so you have an option right there you don't want to be a part of it. You want to be just the purest arm wrestling and, you know, be very serious. Just shut it off right there, you know. But there's a lot of people, I can guarantee you, in this arm wrestling world, man, we we were excited about it. You know, we wanted to see it go down. we never seen anything like that before. I have a lot of respect for both ath athletes just to have the balls to get on the table, man. And, like, I kind of was feeling that butterflies in my stomach when round one, when they were standing ripped up, I was like, holy shit. It kind of like I put myself in that position. I'm like, damn, these dudes got balls, man, for real. Like that that's gotta be scary to look yeah. at that pin pad. And then Uncle John, the way you came out, you came out with handful attacks and you're just putting them all over the table. So it's like, you know, not even on the pads. They were just everywhere on that table. And that was uh yeah, that that's gotta be a scary thing to to go well, through. That was that was the showmanship of it all, right? I So I had pre-ordered a thousand extra tacks in a burlap sack yeah. so I could come out and, and very dramatically dump more tacks on the table, right? I, so, I, I was really just giving them hell, but seriously, Arm Gods is one of my favorite productions. It really is. And I'd love to be a part of that uh, production one day. And actually, we've got that event coming up in May in Atlantic City, the same one that I'm hoping Igor and Creole are coming to. But um, and I've offered that venue to Armed Gods if they want to do anything. I know it's short, short notice, but I've got the venue. It's a super good venue. I've got the camera crew, the staff. There's going to be there, and I got me and Judy. We're international master referees. We'll ref any match they want to bring. So we got it all set up there for uh, the Armed Gods people. If if you guys want to bring something out there and uh, and set it up here last minute and do a show right there on Atlantic City coast and uh, We'll, we'll do it for you. Free free venue, man. Come on. Let's do it. Hey, Marcus Thompson, if you're listening, bro, I'm telling you straight up, bro, you want to get connected with this because Atlantic City, New Jersey, first off, main place to hold an event. Like, I mean, it that is. is the perfect place to get a lot of eyes on it, a lot of non-arm wrestling eyes. Really cool venue over there. And, I mean, just to hook up with, you know, Sean Hancock, you're going to have Igor. I mean, this could be a beautiful relationship in the work, man. And, uh, you know, I'm hearing Arm Gods is working around with the 98%. They've uh, contacted Ryan Grandin. They got some big things in the works as well. And I like how all these uh, promotions now are kind of like working together, man. You know, and that that's a beautiful thing. You know, we don't got to be at competition with each other. We could all work together. So what my thoughts were there, since we have the venue, I've got the venue for all weekend long. So we're going to have the tournament on Saturday so we can do like an Arm of God's uh, uh, Supermatch series on Friday or Sunday or just whatever works. Saturday night. Uh, also, also, if you guys, anybody on that East Coast area, if you're within driving distance, you're yeah. interested in having a Supermatch or whatever, Sean is open to add you onto the card and all. Hit Sean up, you know, if – you know, you got a big uh, ranking match that you propose to him or whatever. You know, they're definitely opening to have some super match. I know it's yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. you know, late notice now, but Sean's definitely looking to add uh, some good super matches over there. Yeah, we got we're we're a month away right now, so you got time to get trained up for. You. So yeah, if you're interested in something there, something there, just uh, yeah, hit me up. But especially the Arm God dudes, man, I'd love to hang out with you guys, meet you. I hadn't uh, been big big fans ever since you started, and I hadn't been able to link up with you yet, and I'm just kind of itching for that moment. You're ready. Yeah. Be prepared. Be rested. Okay, oh, Sean. Be, be rested. No tax. No tax. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all about the party. It's all about the party. Prepare yourself. I can handle that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Very nice. Now we, we got a new segment of our show that I want to introduce, and uh, that is with Matt Hollywood Conley. Oh. We're gonna start, uh, he's going to keep us up at the date with everything going on in Australia, New Zealand area as far as arm wrestling and all. And you know, I'm, I'm looking uh, forward to this, man, because I want to get more connected with you know what's going on in Australia and that side of the world. So, Matt, take, take the mic for a minute and just kind of get us up to date with everything. Yeah, man. Uh, we've got a big event this Saturday with AWE. Uh, it's going to be an eight-man invitation tournament, double elimination, with seven of the top guys in Australia and one from New Zealand, it being Matawaringi, Hannah Morris. Uh, Ryan Bowen will be competing in there as well, and the winner of the tournament will walk away as the AWE heavyweight champion, which is Ryan Bowen at the moment, so he's putting his belt up for grabs. And uh, we'll see if he can retain it. But yes, uh, these eight guys, the interesting thing about this tournament is any one of these eight guys could win this. That That's how close and unpredictable this is. And I think if you ran it 10 times, you get you know a different winner every single time. Um, we've got Matarungi Hedda Morris coming in as the number one seed. We've got Ryan Bowen as the number two seed. We've got guys here from Australia that you might not be familiar with at this point in time. But if you have a look at Ryan's channel, it'll be 12 p.m. on Saturday uh, in Brisbane time on Ryan's channel. You'll be able to see it for free there. And we'll also do a post edit with interviews and all the rest of it and behind the scenes sort of thing. So you actually get to sort of meet these guys and understand who they are as people and characters and all that. But uh, these guys are, are no jokes. It's, every one of these guys has been a national champion. Um, it, it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal event and uh, that's what we're working towards. So we'll be heading over to Brisbane tomorrow and uh, tomorrow night, uh, which is Friday night for us. I think we're a day ahead of you already. Uh, we'll be doing some press conference stuff, some face-off stuff. But uh, yeah, we're very excited to bring that to you. It, it's uh, it's going to be an incredible event. And is uh, Lachlan Carpenter going to be in there? Because I know him and Ryan just had like a, a war and I think Lachlan got the better of them that day. You know, and there's been a lot of chatter like, you know, waiting for this event happen. Will he be going against Ryan during this event? Yeah, he's in the tournament as well. Yeah, so we ran an event in Brisbane in February, and it was a tournament tournament event for our AWE T series. And uh, Ryan entered the tournament sort of on a whim. Um, I think he hadn't really been training for it. But uh, Lachlan Carpenter, who is an absolute monster uh, top roller, uh, he has very focused on his arm wrestling career at this point in time. And he'd put on 20 kilos in like three months since I'd seen him last, which was ridiculous. It's like 45 pounds. Um, I saw him in November and I saw him in February and it was like, he was a third bigger. I was like, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like, I'm going to win this tournament no matter what. And uh, Ryan entered and uh, Lachlan ran through him Uh and then he, they met up again in the final and Lachlan won it again. So, yeah, he's uh, he's somebody that is a dark horse in this for sure. And he's he's a phenomenal top roller. Um, yeah, he's very focused on it. He, him and Mario Tembakis, who you might be familiar with, he, he competes over in the Arizona state. Uh, we we uh, actually got to bring that up right now. Mario Tembakis. I met Mario a couple of years back over at Washington States and I never forgot him. Dude is an absolute beast, man. Great energy person as well. And the reason why we also got to bring him up, he's got a big match coming up May 11th. He'll be over in New Jersey with the Knuckles Up crew, Knuckles Up 3, and mm -hmm. he's going against the Jersey hometown kid Jason Merlo, man. This is going to be fireworks, guys. And I kind of want to get everybody's predictions on this. And let's start off with Sean, because I know you've been a ref over there. You got to see Merlo in action first mm -hmm. then, and you actually ref him. Who do you think is going to get the win that day, bro? Well, that's the thing about Merlo. It's, it's not that I just saw him compete and I got to wreck him there in the, uh, at the high five or uh, the knuckles at one. I've been a fan of his for a long, long time. He and I are in the same weight class. And uh, I've actually been trying – he and I have been talking for years about trying to get something set up. It just hadn't worked out logistically. He's up on the far northeast, and I'm down here in the in the south, and it just hadn't worked out. But, I, I, I mean, I've been trying to get something set up. We need to pull him left-handed. Um, he's got a he's got a very, very impressive left-handed one that I very much idle. I'd like to fill it. Um, we're both in the top ten. I'd love to pull that guy. So, it's, he's, he's somebody that I've – um, been impressed with for a really long time, and I just can't 
ever, even when he wasn't in, on the radar, when people, other people wouldn't notice him, I was noticing him. And I was like, this guy right here is something, you know? So I can't, I, I can't never bet against the fine wine. Jason Merlo, man, that guy is something else. I'm going to ask Matt, what's your thoughts, man, on this match? Because, you know, I know Mario's your guy and all that. Do you know much about Jason Merlo, though? Uh, I don't actually, but uh, I know how strong Mario is. It's absolutely ridiculous, and he just seems to get stronger and stronger. Um, I remember we had an event here a couple of years ago, and I've got a great uh, after pull footage of of Mario literally talking to somebody and drinking a beer as he's just pinning people one after the other <laughs> that are coming up to the table. Um, yeah, he's incredibly strong, and. Uh, he had a fantastic match at AWE two on left arm against Artem Taranenko that went back and forth and Barrio ended up uh, getting the win there. So he is uh, one of, one of those top guys that uh, I think he's just under the radar at this point in time. Certain people know who he is, but I think if he has one of those really high profile matches and gets a big win, I think he could really be a superstar in the sport. Uncle John, what's your thoughts on this match, man? Very interesting. The, the the two matches that I'm looking forward to the most, honestly, are both both have Jason Morlow in them. I think they're beautifully picked. Um Mario, I've I've pulled Mario on the side table a few times. And there's been a couple times where I pull him and I'm like, oh yeah, I got Mario, no problem. And then like I pull him later and I feel like he's a dump truck and I'm just a little child and I'm lost in the woods and I don't I don't know what to do. So it's 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 hard for me to get a real good gauge on Mario. What I do know is that Jason Merlot is like really a bad dude, like a really really bad dude. Um, so I'm gonna be torn because I really like both guys. If I was if I was betting, I would give the slight advantage to Jason Merlot. Uh, partially because a lot of travel, you know, all that stuff affects things. I do think it's a match. I do think it's close. Um, but I, I'm, I would go with Merlot if, if, if it was up to the wall. Brandon, what's your thoughts on this one, man? I know you're probably leaning to Merlot because he's a local guy and all, but I gotta go with my local guy. A tough opponent. I gotta go with my local guy and support him. And, uh, you know, I've seen Merlot pull with, very high level people and surprise some people that you would think would pin him. And they're like, Oh my God. So mm -hmm. I got to go with Merlot. Israel. Yeah, man. Uh, I've been following Mario for a while. Uh, we're of similar age and he's an up and coming guy. Uh, you got to give him props for stepping up to the plate, but the favorite has got to be Jason Merlot. Ooh, I know Will and Chris, I know you're throwing the event and all, but uh, what's your thoughts, man, on, on the match? I know you can't pick your, your favorite and all, but how do you think it's going to go, man? You expect the uh, well, not say. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's tough, right? I think uh, ultimately, I think what's going to help is that it's a 215 weight cap. So Mario is going to be coming down. Uh, you know, we've been talking with him to make sure that he kind of is good with making weight and we're trying to get him a little bit earlier so he can kind of recover as well and adjust to the time um, to make it as even as possible. But the, the main reason why we even set it up is just because stylistically, right? You have Mario that's crazy side pressure and we're seeing that he can transition from a top role. And if he needs to go into his press, it's there too. Um, but then you see what Merlot did last time with Tom Holland and his ability to kind of battle somebody that has a strong hook. So it's a, it's a banger. Yeah, no, I, I can't pick it. <laughs> yeah, Chris needs to run for politics, man. <laughs> Jeez. What a political answer. And I don't need to run for politics. It's fuck well, that Jason Merlo all day long. <laughs> oh, Will. <laughs> no, no, in all seriousness, um, I, I think it's going to be a great match. Obviously, look, I've felt um jason before right um i mean i'm still up and coming in the sport but um i do would consider that i ha i think i have a very strong hand um and my hand is nothing compared to merlo's i mean he, the dominance that he has is is pretty incredible so i do think he has the upper hand but um no pun intended but i think um in terms of overall strength i think mario is definitely a, a level of strength above so i think it's actually going to come more down to who has the skill to make their transitions appropriate during the match versus um, like an all out victory from one or the other. All right. Will can be a politician too. <laughs> <laughs> 
got a stupid chat from David Torres for eleven dollars eleven cents, and he says a little love and support. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for that, David. Really appreciate oh, that. So we got another super no chat. Michael Workspace for four ninety nine. He says since RVJ is here, I have to ask. How come he always trashing non-North American pullers for PEP usage when the North American pullers are on it too, like Devin? It's hypocritical. So, uh, RBJ, if you're in there, man, if you want to come pop on, yo, Israel, send RBJ a link if just in case if he wants to come on. If not, just answer in the chat, bro. Um, other one we got from Clifton Erickson for nine ninety nine. He goes, how is everyone going? Awesome show. Thank you very much, Clifton. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you for the support. I'm uh, I'm interested to hear on uh, uh, what RBJ has to say to Michael's workspace and all. And RBJ, definitely come pop on, man. I know uh, I know you got a lot to say. I uh, want to bring up uh, your thoughts on the banning of arm wrestling organizations as well. And uh, now I also want to go into the segment with Israel, kind of just catch us up on what's been going on in the community this week. Uh, this week there's been a, uh, there was IFA Nationals actually. I wanted to go uh, through that. Uh... Sean has talked about it a little bit, but uh, there was a uh, a few people who won who were who was pretty uh, surprising. Uh, we had a local guy, uh, Santino Bravo. He's actually a guy in our team who uh, got second place in the sixty three kg. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, and, me too. He's and now he's go, go banned. Ahead. He's banned from East versus West. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, said, shout yeah. out Santino, man. <laughs> Santino's great North Cal puller. He uh, comes and trains with us occasionally. Um, really, really good puller, lightweight dude, very technical. I call him the the ninja of the table. He literally comes in ninja shoes when he's uh, training I and love all. The but socks. yeah, the but socks. real for real. The dude is legit. Uh, I got to give props to the guy who won. It was Landon Hicks. He took first in that left hand category in the sixty three kg. But uh, you know, I just wanted to shout my boy out. Uh, who else? We got uh, Brent Rockers. He actually defended both the. Right and left, ninety-five kg category. So uh, that dude Brent's is one of the baddest men in the, in the country, though. Yeah, I know, but for those, you know, <laughs> maybe some of the newer guys that don't know, Brent has been clearing out classes for over a decade. I mean, the dude that is, is a bad, awesome. bad man. Hell yeah, knuckles up might want to get Brent Rakers out there, man. That, that's definitely somebody we'd like to see, I think. And uh, I know he's not on the contract. I don't believe on the East versus. He, oh, he's yeah. not on the contract, and he's one of those that did not give a shit. He's like, bring me a band. I don't give a damn. I, <laughs> I love like Brent. It. We'd love to work with Brent. Nah, he's he's a beast. I met him back, I want to say, like, in Florida IFA when Worlds was here. Um, Awesome dude. Yeah, we definitely talked to him before. Yeah, yeah. Brent, is, Brent is a monster for sure. Uh, another guy, he came in behind him both arms that I think deserves a lot of props is Eli Broward. That guy is also yeah. a beast. Yeah, Eli is. Wow. And Eli, Eli – did very well in the 198 round robin, right? Yes. Was he in yes. that one? Yes, he was. He did not. He did well. I think he was in the top six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I definitely. He went on my radar that day. Definitely a very good puller. He, Eli went to Worlds this past year. I'm not sure what place it that he ended up placing. It was kind of further down the line, but uh, Alex ended up winning that. Um, you know, schoolboy's brother, Alex. Uh, top row. He actually yeah. ended up winning that class, and um, oh. and, and Eli beat Alex. Yeah, he got Alex got round. third behind him, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'd be interesting to see them in a in a head to head matchup. Hmm. Shout out to Alex Top Row, man. Uh, yeah, if Alex, if you're listening, hit me up on uh, Facebook. I'd love love to get you on interview. Um, I know we had RBJ on the other day, and uh, you know RBJ was saying that schoolboy wasn't natty and i know a couple people in the chats were saying that um alex top Row said like a year ago that you know i think he might be going to pancakes and all i'm not sure if that was actually said but i'm very interested to hear i want to hear his take and uh if schoolboy is natural um anymore or has he went to pancakes so continue oh, yeah. israel um, yeah uh, another guy that i wanted to mention is uh the guy behind the AERS uh, ranking system, we got Corey Miller. He also entered in and Corey Miller. took in first place left and right at the 86 kg category. So the dude is another legend who has been, you know, clearing classes yeah. for just as long. I mean, what what, what do you got to say about Corey? He's he's well, he's, well, hold on. We got to We got to make a note of that because um, Corey Miller is at the biggest size he's ever been. 
he was yep. just over at Air Blast, and when I put my eyes on him, I did a double take. Literally, you could ask him this. I was like, "What the hell have you been eating, bro? Like, <laughs> holy shit!" So no, I mean, you know, it, we we have him pulling in uh, Dubai and uh, next month, and he's uh, he's pulling up to eighty six kg. So he is he's the, that is absolutely the biggest he's ever been. I mean, the guy normally would be in, would pull like a hundred feet or something. Yeah, he's um he's a he's, he's a, a seventy sixer, right? He's I remember him battling it out with Luke Kent sometimes. Yeah, uh, typically, yeah, but, but when, he's but, but he's, he's even poured, he's even poured fifty fours, but oh, he's yeah. pulling eighty six he, he's pulling eighty six kg uh, in uh, in Dubai. Wow. Yeah. So what's yeah, that? That under Igor's WAC event. He's going to be one of the North American athletes under there. So he's one of the, the big guys that's going to be representing us over there. And let me just find out how much the 86 kilogram. Alexa, how much is 86 kilograms in pounds? 86 kilograms is about 190 pounds. 190. So we got 190 pound Corey Miller right there, man. Yeah. That, Wrong. That was and we talk about it a lot. He's a good friend of mine. We're we're both on the ranking committee. So actually, we've had many conversations just today. But he's been talking about that for a while, though, how he's gaining weight, and uh, that's his plan to go in there bigger and stronger than he's ever been. He's been battling some injuries uh, over the past year and a half or so, but he says he's completely over those. He feels healthy. He feels good, and uh, that's his plan. And I'm telling you, the guy's a freak of freaking nature, man. Uh, he's he's one of those like Brent Rockers, Brent is another freak, but uh Corey's uh Corey's just as much a freak as him as far as uh unnatural strength. So let me ask you, Sean, with that being said, in the 190 pound class, do you think he's the favorite to take that win that day in Igor's uh WAC with he's eight athletes? Far, in it? Not the favorite. He's our he's our hopeful here in the States, but he's definitely not the favorite. Um by far. I can't think of the name, but I mean there's several of the guys over there in in uh in Europe that are that are gonna be the favorites over Corey that day. And I know he knows that too, so he's gonna um go in swinging. But we also have Daniel Mosier that's pulling that class as well. Mm. Daniel Mosier. That guy's wow. always interesting. That's always gonna be that, that's a that's a big drop for Daniel because I think Daniel usually walks around between like two ten, two twenty, so he's making a significant drop for that. Um, Daniel has pulled that class more than he's pulled any other class. Um, over the, the, the last Lottie tour that he competed in, I don't even think he had to cut for that. No, he did have to cut just a little bit, but he pulled the 86 class then. Um, the 95 class is the class I pull in. I don't know more than just a couple of times really that Daniel's pulled that class. He usually pulls the 86 class. He, he just bumped up. Matter of fact, whenever uh, PAL was still in operation, we were looking for somebody in the 95 class. So I was pushing him to go to the 95 class. He was too light. He was too light for the 95 class at that time. And I was pushing him to go to the 95 class so he could compete and, and, and rep us over in PAL at the, um, uh, at the 95 kilogram. But he, uh, so he had to gain weight for that. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Israel, uh, you want to? Yeah, on yeah. On? I'm just gonna just gonna finish up here with the last couple classes. Um, there's one guy I wanted to touch on for the 105 kg category on the right. His name is uh, Jack Severa, if I'm not pronouncing that wrong. Uh, this guy, he's a he's a newish puller. He came on the radar for me back when Devin was doing his uh his last tour around the U.S., going around and challenging all the different teams. He he himself said something about that guy having something special, and I think this was his big first debut where he went in and he got a first place right-handed and second place left-handed. He trains with uh, Jacob Abbott's team out of uh, somewhere in Washington, if I'm not mistaken. Washington. Mm -hmm. So that guy yep. is, uh, that guy's pretty impressive. And uh, for the supers, we got the top three. Uh, Kevin Butes came in first. Uh, second, uh, he, I think he's a newer puller. His name is Urbano Ponce. He's a big boy. And uh, third was Wayne Withers, which is pretty surprising. I would think <laughs> Wayne would have won, but uh, hey, those guys are obviously. Wow. Uh, there, there's there's two Waynes. Wayne's my teammate, and he's probably going to really kick my ass for saying this, but uh, there's two Waynes. There's the Wayne that comes to the tournament semi-sober and serious, and then there's the one that comes to the tournament hungover and don't give a shit. <laughs> And I'm just being completely honest. They're 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 drastically different. And that is the Wayne that showed up Saturday 
and Matt's. Uh, when he walked up to me again, he's my teammate. We're uh, we've been teammates in Mississippi for our whole, I mean, his whole career at least. And um, so um, when he walked up to me and uh, Saturday, I saw his eyes, and then he got within about four feet, and then I smelled it, and I was like, "Damn, are you hungover?" He said, "Well, yeah," and I was like. So that you was knew the way you knew it so, then. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, not to just hop in real quick, but interestingly enough, you might be seeing Wayne on May 11th. Oh, great. great. Okay. Tell him to keep his clothes on in the hotel. Matter of fact, <laughs> lock him up in his hotel room. I don't think I could stop Wayne. That guy's a freaking <laughs> <laughs> I think If he's taking his clothes off, they're coming off. <laughs> I got stories about Europe with him, and uh, but I'm not going to tell him because he almost got arrested. So we're not going to tell those stories. <laughs> uh, so is, does he have a match or out over there? Knuckles up. He, he will have a match, and the reason why I've been looking down at my phone most of this time is I'm trying to confirm his opponent. So. Oh wow, we got things uh, working live. Well, who right is now. it? Who is it? Who's he pulling? No, 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 no. That's not how this works. That's I'll, how this I'll works. answer. <laughs> Will, I'll answer you. What? Uh, <laughs> oh, Ryan knows. Ryan, Ryan, knows. Ryan, do you know something that I don't know? No, no, no. <laughs> is he pulling you grounding? They got you going against Wayne Withers. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> That's Great a, match. Fair match. match. Ryan <laughs> for four weeks straight, and just and he's just gonna get massive. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! And then, uh, and then Paul, real quick, just to not you know, just to not leave him out, I'm gonna go ahead and read out uh, all the ladies who won first place in the in the women's category for the for 63 kg right. We have Lear and Wilson, and uh, second place a local uh, Tara Terry. Uh, oh, that's a yeah. girl, Tara Terry, man. Yeah, She's uh, local. Yeah, she comes and trains with us up in North Cal. Uh, amazing, amazing puller. And our father, Robert Terry, shout out. I know they were in the chat before. Um, again, guys, I can't see the chat right now. My other phone went dead. So Israel or Matt, if you guys could just watch the chat for me. If yeah, I've been, goes we've been, out, me like, and Matt have been keeping up with it. Yeah, it's all good. Cool, cool. Hell yeah. And then, and then um, who else came? We got uh, we got Lear, Lear Wilson first. Will, we got yeah. uh, Tara Terry, too, who was number three. And then third was uh, Addison Miller. I'm not sure who she is, but she came I in think, third. I think she's Cor – that's Corey's daughter. That's Corey's daughter. Oh, okay. oh nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Very nice. Okay. Oh, well, she's very, she's very, very young. Uh, she's, only, she's only like 14 years old. She will be wow. a badass. She will be oh, a yeah. badass one day. Now that I know who she is, I don't doubt it. Very cool. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Uh, moving we got to make mention of uh, Learyn Wilson. Okay. It's amazing, amazing puller. She's just killing it out there. So uh, top level puller. Congratulations for getting that win as well. Oh, Talk yeah. about beautiful too. <laughs> so Israel, uh, is that uh, is that pretty much everything that's been uh, there, been there's here a, this week? Or you guys? Yeah. Other other than the uh, than the IFA results, that's pretty much it. You know. Uh, Devin and uh, Levon's interview. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see that. There was some interesting things said there. Some footage of uh, Dennis Plankov coming back and training. But uh, yeah, in terms of events, that's mostly it. Hmm. Well, catch us up real quick on that interview. What, what went down? Anything like significant? Well, <laughs> it was just a lot of back and forth between Devin and Levon. Um, I'm not sure how much you guys saw. I don't want to just repeat the whole thing. But uh, yeah, it was on uh, the East versus West uh, <laughs> podcast. And Devin was just basically messing with Levon, telling him that, you know, if uh, the way that he lost or the way that Ermi's almost stopped him and he beat him easier than Levon did, that Levon is finished. And that seems to really get Levon going. That He doesn't like hearing that. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be a fun one, man. I can't wait to get it happen. And yeah, just man. like I said before, man, I just hope to get some sort of miracle that day. And I. Devin pulls this win off because then we're guaranteed number three. And for the arm wrestling community, that would be the best scenario for everybody. You and, know? and I'll tell you what. And Paul, I'm not taking anything away from LeVon. I love you, bro. I'm not mad at you for not having an interview. I know you're under contract and all, so that's not me talking shit, bro. It's just, you know, I want to see a number three <laughs> go down between you guys oh, for yeah. real. And, and I'll tell you, man, Devin's going so hard this um, time with the, the mind games that he really needs to win. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, another thing I want to bring up is, uh, you know, reason why Ryan Grounding's on here as well is, you know, there was a video that was surfaced out uh, this week. 
And I've been going through a lot um, on my home front. And I just had my grandmother pass away. So I've been at wakes and funerals. So I haven't really been catching up with the arm wrestling community. But, you know, a couple of days back, I got like a bunch of messages. And everybody was sending me this one interview. And we're just like, yo, you got to check it out. You know, Nanya's on there and, you know, saying all this crazy stuff and all. And saying that Ryan Grondin was in on it and, you know, it was like a setup and, you know, the, the planning of coming in all late and all. So I don't really want to get into all this. We've talked about this so many times. Like, I, I, I'm over it. I'm past. On, I, I moved on. You know, I don't want to bring this up. But I do want it to be clear that me and Ryan Grinden and the 98, we are all good. I do not believe anything that was said. I know the truth. I know what went down that day and all. And uh, that's why Ryan's here right now. That's why I'm wearing a 98 shirt. You guys are going to be seeing a lot of a lot of things going on between IAP and 98% coming up. A lot of business things going on. And I plan to be at the next Winter Blast. We're already talking about super matches and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't want to just get into all the details and all. But, uh, Ryan, do you want to just uh, say anything else yeah, as well, far as... Uh, only, I just want to say one thing about that video. Say no to drugs, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that video, that video of Harlan and Nanya was something else. Yeah, man, that's that summed it up perfectly, guys. That's crazy. Um, I know, Sean. Um, uh, I know you were there that day. You were the ref and all. And I know you want to just throw in something, you know, because you heard something on the video that you didn't like. So I'll let you, uh, you know, throw in your two cents as well. No, yeah, the one thing that I heard was people saying that uh, we weren't ready, and uh, that's the reason we were. So we had, uh, what what did we have, Ryan, 588 entries? 588, yeah. We had 588 entries, and then we had an hour's worth of um, super matches before those entries that I riffed. So, and I've got McCory over the years, me and Corey are trying to get us um, – his 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 um, program his um, bracketing program like I want it I guess so uh, I guess for me anyway so he's been working on that a lot and one of the things I have him working on is a percentile of, of the the completion of the tournament the reason I do that is because a lot of my tournaments have to be over by a certain amount of time so I kind of do the math you know I'll go to him or I'll go to my bracket person I'll say what's the percentage rating and they can tell me fifty percent well I know if we been going for three hours we got three hours left you know or if i've got four hours of stage time left i can stretch it out or if i've got two hours of stage time left i need to step it up you know go faster so anyway we get through with the uh, super matches <clears throat> by like 1 one thirty, something like that and uh we're going and we're going up until the time that uh about the time that we need to do this uh th this deal what was it three o'clock we're supposed three to do that three, yep. three yeah. o'clock Three o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And everybody knows because he said on there that if he knew what time it was for nine months, these flyers were made and yeah. everything was set at 3 p.m. So there is no like mystery, like when the match was going to be. It was 3 p.m. from the beginning. Yeah. So anyway, so we, we get down to the time to where we need to do this super match and they're telling me, OK, it's time to do the super match. I'm like, all right. So I go to Corey and just like an in instinct thing. What's my uh, what's my percentage counter? And Corey looks down, and he looks up at me, and we've been on stage now for a couple of hours. And uh, he looks down, he looks at me, and I could tell he don't want to tell me. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? So I go around there, and I look, and it's at 8%. 8%. Oh. <laughs> and I'm already tired. And I'm like, mm. oh, hell no. I'm not coming off the stage. We're not, we're not breaking and waiting for you know, for them to come. So I said, I told him, I said, when, when both of them, when both of them get here, then we'll, we'll immediately stop. We'll, I mean, as soon as we get through that match, we'll stop and uh, we'll do the super match and we'll get going again. And hell, they never, a matter of fact, this is act, actually after we did stop, we stopped for like 15 or 20 minutes. And that's when I, I finally asked Corey and that's when I finally got it, got it going again, you know? So it was kind of pissing me off. It wasn't kind of pissing me off. It was very much pissing me off that um, none you wasn't there he wasn't showing up and we had the show stopped for him and i'm at eight percent you know and i'm like thinking and, and so i'm doing the math in my head we're like at midnight we're getting done at midnight now we're getting done at fucking midnight so i'm getting more and more pissed off the more i think about it. we're getting done at midnight 
And uh, he never showed up, never showed up. So we finally got back on the stage, and that's when they were saying, well, when we got there, they still wasn't ready for us. Yeah, we were ready for you. You just never got there, nowhere near in time, you know? Yeah. Anyway, and it was a pure shit show after that. Hey, uh, didn't you say that was one of the most difficult matches you've ever refed? Look, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going – uh, I've got a, some, of you, some of your guys, actually. We're getting together, and we're going to film a, a real – a professional referee clinic for film for people to, to learn how to ref. And I'm going to use that um, matchup as one of my examples there in that film. It's going to be shown <laughs> worldwide. Now I'm not going to say any names, but I'm going to say if you ever have a match that this just impossible to ref, quit trying to ref it the way you would something else. And just tell both of the competitors, I'm going to foul you out. You're going to get commands. When you get three commands, that's one warning. When you get two warnings, that's one foul. I don't care if you pull it or not. It's up to you. So when you give them, when you tell them wrist, that's one command. Literally tell them that. You're going to see this in the video. Wrist, one command. Wrist, that's two commands. Wrist, that's three commands. That's one warning. We're going to do this until you foul out. Yeah. That's what I actually started doing with them in the uh, in the third round. And that's the only thing that actually did work with them. So yeah, it really was the, the toughest uh, the toughest fight that I've ever riffed. Yeah. Sean, can I just ask with the King's move ruling that you guys were running with, um I was talking about this with Tib Bresden as well after uh at Arm Gods because we were talking about the match. Um the rulings that you were going with, so if if your shoulder dips below parallel or below the height of the table you're giving one warning to immediately stand back up, you know, or bring your shoulder back above the level of the height of the table. Uh, and then if it goes back below again, that's, is that a foul or is that a loss? No, it's a foul, but it's not an immediate stand up. You get two seconds to stand up. So if they're, if their humerus goes into a deep time angle or basically if their shoulder drops below the, the, the pad, then you and and that's only if they're in the neutral or the losing position. If they're on the winning side, they're in the winning position. They can be below as far as they want to. But then if they come back, if they are, or stay down that in that position and they come to neutral or losing, we give them a command to come up. And they have two seconds to comply. If they come up, they can pull all day long. If they go down, you only give one command per match or per per, per setup. So if they come up, they're fine. If they drop back down, it's an immediate stop with a foul. If they do not come up within 10 seconds, then it's a stop with a foul. And that's just yeah, so that's, that's typical IFA rules. Yeah. yeah so a running uh, foul, run, sorry. Uh, so it's a running foul, or is it you stop it on the very on the first? So if he's he's gone down, you've given the warning to stand back up, he stands back up, he goes back down. That's a foul. Do you stop that, or is that a running foul? No, that's immediate stop on a foul. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's that's that would be after you gave them the first command. They only get one command per setup, and it would be right. the same thing as that they drop down. You gave them the command, and they didn't come up, and within those two seconds, after two seconds, you stop and issue the foul. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so I, I just want to be known to the public, man. Like, I'm not trying to relive this. I'm not trying to keep bringing this up. You know, it's just when I got all these messages and him straight up just saying all that crazy stuff on a podcast, you know, I didn't even want to, like, go into it. But it just had to be addressed. So I just put it out there and I was like, yo, here's for everybody to see. Obviously, he wants everybody to hear what he has to say. Here it is, man. You know, I'm not trying to make any excuses. I'm not trying to keep harping on this. I I just want to move on from it. But I just I, I couldn't believe the disrespect that he did with that video. You know, I, I mean, I should expect it from his character and all. But I just I, I felt like he was embarrassing himself by, you know, taking pride in everything he was and all. And I just you know, I think other promoters need to know, you know, if you're going to work with this guy. He, he called me out for $5,000 and then didn't even come with $1 of his own money. And I think that just says everything about that match. That that should never even went down. But uh, I, I'm leaving it here, guys. I, I don't want to bring it up anymore. I just, you know, I want to move on. I'm back in the training. I went to PT today, um, got everything checked out. Um, I, I had a little something kink in my arm. 
I wanted to make sure it was nothing serious. I got the green light from the, the PT guy. It's just a muscle that's real tight. Just got to stretch it out. And uh, I'm back in the gym. I'm focused. I'm going to keep my mouth shut and just, you know, put in that work now. I'm going to drop down to that 176 class, and I'm going to get myself out there and get in a bunch of tournaments and just get a lot of experience. So, you know, now I'm just putting my head down, keeping my mouth shut, and putting in the work back to the grind. Um Anything else want to be said, man? I think uh, I pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, Will, what's just, up, brother? Just one, one, one quick thing. First of all, Ryan, it was an awesome tournament. It was great. Thanks. Appreciate even, it. Even Appreciate though it. I sucked, but <laughs> someone didn't suck. This guy uh, playing the wrong direction. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if you didn't know, peace. my coach and business partner, one seventy six right hand pro. Winner over here, which boy I'm pointing. <laughs> so, all right, guys, we gotta. I need an open forum here. Super match for Chris. Who's it gonna be? Yeah, oh, God, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not. Corey Miller, Miller. Yeah, but no, Corey Miller. <laughs> that would be insane. I've definitely pulled Corey before, and he's he's <laughs> way above. But now I was just gonna say, no, you guys did an amazing job, um, Ryan. I mean, Good going there the year it. before as well. Um, I think you kind of made all the improvements that you needed, having Sean there, obviously, and and Corey just made. You had how many more people from last year, and then you were able to kind of compensate for all that. Oh, right? I'll say this: next year will be much better. Right, right. Tell him. Hey, me and Sean, Sean, and Corey are both were both like immediately after 100% great. They were like, dude, next year is going to be better. Like, we have ideas. So, you know, really, we had a couple refs bail, stuff like that. We would have had more tables going. It's kind of a last minute thing. One ref had to leave early that we didn't know about. So next year is next year is going to be big. I can't really say everything, but we're doing some collaborations and uh, it's going to be a whole weekend of craziness. Well, I can say a few things. We can say a few things. For yeah, sure. yeah. We're, we're going to, we'll have a different venue, a larger venue and a way badass venue. That's already in the works. And I'm going to say which one that is, but that's going to be a badass venue. And we'll run at least four full-time tables with eight full-time referees next year. And that's a, that's a guarantee, at least that many. So come to Winter Blast next year. I'm I, I'm going to do everything I can to work with this with with Ryan right here in the '98 crew, and that's going to be the biggest, baddest yeah. tournament in the United States you're ever going to see. And I'll say this: there will be no super matches the day of the tournament. Saturday that was, that was one of our agreements. Saturday is just a tournament, <laughs> but Friday and Saturday are going to be insane super matches. So. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe more, but, uh, so yeah, Ryan, like real quick, I was going to tell that story. So Ryan, right directly after the tournament, Ryan can, comes to me. Right. And this is right after I've been reffing for 11 hours. I'm dead. He comes to me, he says, well, you want to come back next year? And I went, nope. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it'll let. But then I stopped and I said, unless you change some stuff. He's like, okay, I'm willing to listen. So, yeah, it went from there. We've been talking nonstop since then. So, Winter Blast next year is going to be the one to go to. No matter where you are, that's going to be the one to come to. Uh, quick shout out to um, Hector Beltran again with the Mexicali Armed Fighters. This guy's been a stand up dude, man, for a long time. Um, super, super good guy. And then my, uh, my brother in arms, my favorite, my best friend in the sport of arm wrestling, Tim Bresden. He's going to be there with us in the, in Atlantic City as well. He's going to be there with us this weekend in Hot Springs. Matter of fact, he travels with me almost everywhere that I go. Tim Bresden does. I love the dude. Uh, so shout out to Tim. Love you, dude. Tim and his gun. Yeah. He's got his own bedroom in my and, house. And, yo, I'm, I'm going to go out there and say this in a public forum. And, uh, you know, me and Tim, you know, we never really seen eye to eye in the past. But we're willing to put everything behind us and uh, to move forward and, you know, mend that relationship so that we could be involved in the same kind of events. And also, Tim, if you're listening, I got no beef towards you, man. Whatever the past was, was the past. I'm looking forward to positive new beginnings. Cool. All right, guys, um, pretty much uh, we done this week. Uh, thank you, everybody, in the chat. Guys, if you can, just hit that thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it. I uh, want to say shout it out again to the High Five crew. Can't wait for May 11th. It's going to be insane. If you haven't already, go buy your pay-per-view. 
If you're in the local area, definitely come and see in person. I'll be there. It's going to be a blast. They said there's going to be a lot of big time arm wrestling names there coming to chill. So definitely check that out. The following weekend, we'll be over in AC. We got Sean Boom Hancock. He's doing big things. He's got Igor Mazarenko coming in as well. They got some major things um, going on. Also, Arm Gods, if you're interested, he's looking to team up. Maybe you guys do some over in AC. Uh, shout out to Grandin in the 98. Thank you for everything you did, bro. Winter Blast was amazing. Looking forward to our future and our relationship and everything. Um, thank you to the Arm Wrestling Buzz crew, man. You guys are always the best. Matt Hollywood Conley, my teammate, Israel Chavez. Mm. You guys, the man. Yo, let's flex it out before we go. Let's see what everybody's working with. Let's see the gun show, everyone. <laughs> oh, shit. Christopher, we work with you, man. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, you, you, you got to start attacking that uh, the 176 guys. Yo, <laughs> from, the, Zach from the round robin. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing you versus Zach Lee, bro. That could be a good one. Yeah, Zach's a dangerous man. <laughs> I know, especially um, in that shot, man. Another one that make mention of Albert Ding, man. He's I know he's not out there as much, but over in Texas, we all know him. That dude is a killer. That 176 class he practically owns in Texas. That's somebody else you might be interested in as well. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, thank you again, guys. We'll be on uh, next week again on the Arm Wrestling Buzz Show. I'll be back in my normal studio, and my Wi-Fi will be normal. It won't be all choppy and all. So sorry about the quality tonight, but uh, it still was a great show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll talk to everybody next week. Thanks, Mark. Have a good one, guys. Later, guys. Have a good night. See ya.